Hey everybody, it's your old pal Mike. I hope you're happy, healthy, and safe, and welcome back to the channel for another Jazz Master review, this time of the lovely and noteworthy Squire 40th Anniversary Vintage Edition Jazz Master. Uh, names are getting kind of long, kind of hard to remember off the cuff, but uh, I think I did okay on that one. Now this is a really interesting and super affordable guitar from Squire, uh, and I, I honestly, I couldn't be more thrilled about it. I really am very pleased with this thing, from the fit and finish, to the setup, to the appointments, it really is a much nicer guitar than some might expect at its $600 price point. Now before we get too far into it, I want to give a quick shout out to Marcus who brought this to me for the purposes of this review as well as a full-on setup, uh, and it went beautifully. This thing absolutely plays a treat. Like, I could not be happier with how this thing came out. And I think Marcus will be uh, very pleased as well if I give it back. Stick around for the rest of the video and I'll tell you all about my thoughts on this great Squire. But before we do that, let's get into some specs. Squire 40th Anniversary Vintage Edition Jazzmaster features a satin finish 25 and a half inch scale length maple neck with a 9.5 inch radius maple fretboard and 21 narrow tall frets. The headstock wears six aged Cluson style tuners, a bone nut, and the truss rod is also accessible here. The body is made of poplar and is finished in a satin poly desert sand and wears an anodized gold pick guard. The body also features an angled neck pocket to eliminate the use of shims, measuring to a full degree. The bridge and vibrato hardware is the standard stuff of Squire, but aged or relict, and the pickups are Fender-designed Alnico pickups, measuring at 11.6 in the bridge and 6.7 in the neck. It has a three-way toggle switch for pickup selection, as well as one meg volume and tone controls for the lead circuit, while on the upper horn you'll find the rhythm circuit controls, an on-off selector switch, a one meg volume, and a 50k tone. The guitar is strung with 11 to 52 strings with a wound third and is tuned to E standard. Let's start off with some things I like about this guitar. And the first thing I need to talk about is this neck. The size of this neck is shockingly perfect for me. This has a one and five eighths inch nut width, which is my favorite by far. Even though the spec sheet calls for one and 11 sixteenths, it really does feel very slim at the nut. And I am so pleased by that. Now the neck itself starts sort of thick and that is thanks to what I would call sort of a runoff from the headstock. This, this portion of the neck where it tapers down into the playable surface of the neck. It is just a little bit thicker right at the nut. But by the time you get to the first fret, it's, it's what, 0 0.86, 0 0.85, which is pretty comfortable for most players. And by the time you get all the way up to the 12th, it doesn't really get all that much bigger at 0.9 inches. So yeah, I'd say this is a pretty slim feeling neck. I also want to call out the satin finish, which usually doesn't do a whole lot for me. But here it's, it's really comfortable. I'm not feeling stuck on this neck like I do on so many others. It's not glossy, so for a lot of players, that's going to be a big bonus. You won't have to take down any gloss to avoid getting stuck as you move up and down the neck. Uh, the tint is a bit yellow, but it's it's not that bad. I've seen much worse on other guitars, much yellower on some uh, Fenders, in fact. So this is by far not the worst I've seen, and it kind of works with the color scheme of the rest of the guitar. I should point out that the fretwork is also pretty darn good on this guitar. We've got vintage tall frets with nice thin crowns, which if you watch the American Vintage 2 video, this Squire blows that out of the park. These are nice thin crowns. The crowns themselves are just a little rough, but that's what I expect from import fret work, although they are still smooth enough where you're not really going to hear or feel that in most positions as you bend notes. Another thing I love, the weight. This guitar is what I'd call medium weight, not too light, not too heavy. Um, slightly lighter than the American Vintage 2, but uh, not so much that you're going to really notice it. Uh, I'm sure it varies by example, but this one is really comfortable to play sitting down or on a strap, so I think that works for me. As for fit and finish, I need to say that this thing presents beautifully. I haven't seen anything as far as like a factory flaw or something that makes me go, oh, that was missed or rushed. 
Hey everybody, Editing Mike here, breaking in to tell you that after filming I actually did find file marks on the treble side of the fretboard, which I initially missed. I did check with the owner and he tells me that they were there when he received the guitar, which is obviously not great, so keep that in mind as you watch the rest of this review. And from across the room, this thing presents beautifully and has an aura of class lent to it by its adoptive vintage pedigree. With its maple neck and 13-hole guard, it may not perfectly encapsulate the 58-59 gold guard era, but it's a really great guitar that has a great sound. For 600 bucks, this is the total package. <laughs> The more time I spend with this guitar, the more I'm reminded of one of my favorite jazz master encounters from over the years. This one from way back in the distant year of 2015, when I went to Norm's Rare Guitars at the behest of Mark to meet none other than a jazz master belonging to the great Freddie Tavares. If you don't know, Freddie Tavares was a top-notch Hawaiian steel guitar player working with Mancini, Martin, Welk, Crosby, Presley, and others, but he was also a key figure in Fender's earliest days. Tavares is routinely credited with his work on the Stratocaster, most notably the vibrato, but when it came time to do the Jazz Master, he worked closely with Leo Fender and George Fullerton to make the guitar that we love today. Now, if by chance you've never heard of Freddie Tavares, you certainly heard him, especially if you grew up watching Looney Tunes like I did. That lap steel swoop that opens every cartoon? That was him. The guitar I met at Norm's is Freddie's 1958 Jazzmaster in the same color that this is purporting to be, Desert Sand. According to a handwritten note by Freddie himself, his guitar was third off the assembly line and had a number of non-standard features, including a black anodized pickguard, an unbranded vibrato, a 1 and 7 8 inch maple neck, and some of the hottest Jazzmaster pickups I have ever encountered in my life. Seriously, that guitar sent a deluxe reverb straight into overdrive at low volume. It was incredible. And I could hardly play that guitar given the super wide nut width of that neck, which makes total sense when you factor in Freddie's steel guitar roots. All in all, meeting that thing was a dream come true, and I, I think it still holds the crown as the most expensive Jazzmaster I've ever played and inspected. Uh, but my god, what an instrument. I got off topic a little bit, but that's because this guitar reminds me so much of that instrument with its maple neck, its anodized guard, its unbranded vibrato, and the desert sand finish. You know, if, if I had my druthers about it, I might buy one of these myself and just deck it out the same way that that guitar was, with black pickup covers, the guard, you know, switch a few parts and I'll be close enough.
But for this 40th anniversary Jazzmaster, it's not just about the looks. This thing sounds great too, thanks to its surprising set of pickups. The bridge unit here measures at 11.6, which is an unthinkable amount of output for a Jazzmaster pickup, but it actually, it's a lot of fun. I, I really, I love how hot this pickup is. And it balances really well with the neck pickup, which is, I mean, almost half of its DC resistance, but it's still bright, it retains its fullness. And in the rhythm position, it's dark, it's syrupy, just like any good Jazzmaster should be. Now, would I swap pickups if I owned one of these? I probably still would, but that is as I am wont to do. Uh, that's not to say that these pickups are unworkable or sound bad. They don't. They're really fun. Although the owner does tell me that the bridge pickup has a tendency to squeal a bit at volume, which unfortunately is something that I can't test here, what with my HX stomp rig. Now, as for the electronics themselves, it's pretty standard fare for a Squire. In the lead position, you've got mini pots and a bit of a rat's nest as far as wiring goes, but all of that is to be expected on import models. If you are touring this or you want the most out of your guitar, something a little bit more robust, I would highly recommend swapping out these components for full-size CTS pots and some uh, nicer wiring overall, as well as switchcraft switches, uh, but that uh, that's not the most important thing in the world for most people. And if the guitar works, hey, stick with it until it breaks. I am also happy to see that Squire is taking the time to leave bare portions of this pick guard as far as the anodizing process is going. If you're not aware of how gold guards work, this is a thick sheet of aluminum on the front of the guitar, and the color comes from the anodizing process. Now, the anode layer is not itself conductive, which can spell disaster if you're installing one of these on a guitar and you can't get a ground connection from component to component. Generally, the way you take care of that is you just sand a little bit of the gold off, and the guard is itself acts as that ground connection. Honestly, I like these for shielding a lot better than, say, the thin aluminum shield that comes under celluloid guards or even foil on the back of a guard. Both of those things work great, but this is, this is maybe as good as you're going to get as far as shielding goes, which means that it pays to have that anode layer sanded off around the components on the back of the guard. And from testing with a multimeter, all of these components are grounded together, so it's working great. There's also shielding paint in the cavities, although it doesn't go the whole way up the walls. So if you get one of these and you're having just a little too much noise, you might want to redo that portion of the shielding. But otherwise, this thing is actually doing great. It's not super noisy. I feel like it's about what I expect from a single coil equipped Jazzmaster. And given that the bridge pickup is so darn hot, I really wanted to get a photo of what exactly this coil shape looks like. Is it a Jazzmaster pickup was the question I had. And from pulling it out of the body, it does appear to be a Jazzmaster bobbin, although slightly thicker than I'm usually expecting to see. But I can't actually tell you what it looks like because these pickups are epoxied to the inside of their covers. Removing them would mean possibly damaging the uh, cover itself and uh, chipping through some epoxy, and I'm just not willing to do that on someone else's guitar. So uh, if you are going to swap pickups, you, you're definitely gonna need covers of your own. The hardware on this guitar is your standard sort of classic vibe fare. We've got the Mustang style 9.5 inch radius bridge, which matches the neck. That's a great bridge, it works just fine. Uh, don't feel a need to swap it unless you have a preference for Satrem or Halon or Mastery or Descendant or whatever other bridge you like. This should work just fine out of the box, if not for the foreseeable future. The vibrato is, I still maintain, worth replacing if you're gonna use it a lot. Now this one works just fine, although I did have to do some serious hammer tricking to this arm to get it to stop clicking. When this first came to me, this was one of the noisiest arm and collet fits that I've ever heard. And it took three or four really strong hits of a hammer to get enough of a bend in this arm where it no longer rattled around while I used it. So that's a mark against it. Now the fit on these can really vary. Yours may be fine out of the box or it may be just as noisy as this one. So if you need the hammer trick, refer to my one weird trick video from a while back and uh, you will be good to go.
Now, one interesting thing about this model is that Squire has used aged hardware to uh, impart a vintage character onto the instrument. And I say well done to them because while it is sort of a double-edged sword for me personally, the aging shows a level of thoughtfulness to the buyer of a $600 Squire that, um, I don't know, I, I just didn't expect to see. In fact, this was a spec that I wasn't even aware of when I first heard about this model coming out. So. Yeah, I say well done, and the aging itself looks pretty good. The vibrato is perhaps the most glaring example of it being rock tumbled or what have you. It looks very fake as far as wear goes, especially when you consider that most original examples actually don't age like this at all. Vintage Jazzmaster vibratos are plated in this nice, thick, robust chrome plating, probably to resist wear. Have a look at my 1961 vibrato on Pancake, my 63. Now, I'm not complaining seriously about this. I am just talking. Forgive me for that. I actually think this is a really cool feature and gives this guitar a really cool look. I just think it's worth noting that the originals generally don't wear like this. The guitars I've seen that have had such pitted and worn chrome plating have lived in either really humid environments or saltwater environments. Uh, specifically, there were a bunch that I've seen that I know lived in Hawaii their whole lives, and those vibratos were, were just rust city. So yeah, a very curious spec, especially when you combine that with the maple fretboard, which is another fun spec for this model, because if you didn't know, the Jazzmaster back in 1958 was actually the very first model in the Fender catalog to use rosewood as a standard fretboard material, and ostensibly, that's because Leo Fender was quite displeased with the way that his maple fretboards were showing wear. So yeah, there's some curious choices made on this, but it's not like I'm looking at this as a serious replacement for a vintage guitar, I'm not. It's got a great vibe, I just wanted to share some facts with you and uh, generally waste a bit of time. So, you know what? Let's move on. In conclusion, this Squire 40th Anniversary Vintage Edition Jazzmaster is wonderful. I really like this. And like I said earlier, oh, I, I kind of want to get one of my own and make a Tavares Jazzmaster out of it. But, um, you know, I just can't justify owning another guitar. But if I did. I would seriously consider this. And I just have to say again, I am in love with this neck and I'm not sure if this is a fluke, but it really is one and five eighths. It's super comfortable and very slim and it's very close to my ideal. So well done Squire on that. Thank you for making an old man happy. Really no, no serious complaints on this one. This is just a really fun guitar and uh, if you yourself are looking for an affordable option among all of the jazz masters out there, I really think you should consider this one. Editing Mike again, if you're watching this in December of 2022, Sweetwater actually has them on sale through the 11th at $359.99. I'm in no way sponsored by Sweetwater, but I do have an affiliate link below if you feel like picking one up. I really like this guitar. I really like this guitar. Maybe I'll look at some listings. Anyway, thank you so much for coming back to the channel again and again and for watching this great Jazzmaster review of this great Jazzmaster. I want to give a shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your continued support, your love, your kindness. It means the world to me. I think we've built a lovely little community over there. If you too are interested in supporting the channel, please click the links in the description down below. I've got to get this back to Marcus, uh, although I don't want to. Uh, this is this is such a great guitar. I really ought to look into one of these for myself. Um, Christmas is a coming. Anyway, I hope that you're taking care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next video.